wish I could at least spend it on something useful. I, I could replace the lawnmower, but I only have enough for the cheap push real kind. And I doubt that would make my parents happy at this point. Not after my dad's reaction to Scott offering up his allowance. I put the money back in my dresser and wish for a way to fix everything. I haven't spoken to my dad in days. I spend most of the afternoons after school and the nights in my room. Sometimes I come down for dinner. A silent 15 minutes of nobody talking except my mom. Every so often, Brian will make a face at me, and the two of us will laugh. It makes both of my parents angry. My mom visits me in my room every once in a while. She asks me how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking of doing that night. I tell her I'm fine, or I don't know, every time. You shouldn't lie in bed all day, she says. Walk around a little, or you'll waste away. I wish she understood what part of me was wasting away. I don't want you to become lazy, she says. I'm not becoming lazy, I say. She gives me a sad look. No, I suppose you're not. My mom and dad fight a lot. My dad brings up, brings up the missing wedding ring a few times because apparently that's fair game now. They say my name a lot. I lie in bed and my hands tap out, tap out rhythms on my thighs as my parents shout out, shout on the floor below. Even with my desk set disassembled, I can't help practicing. It helps me stay calm. It's the same exact routine until late afternoon on Thursday. My dad bursts into my room and says, we need a few extra things for dinner tonight. You're coming to the store with me? Do I have to, I say? Yes, your mother won't be back for a while and you're not sneaking out while I'm gone. Where exactly would I, would, where I would want to go, I think. I get up from my bed and follow my dad outside to the car. My mouth shut the entire time. He drives several blocks to the store and pulls into the parking lot as I desperately wish for this trip to be over. We're getting out of the car when I spot a small yellow car with numbers written on the rear side window in black sharpie. My heart skips. Dad, I say. My voice shaking. Can I please wait in the car? No, he says. You're coming with me, and I don't want to hear about it. We walk inside the store, and I see Pete at the checkout counter with the oddest possible assortment of groceries. Steaks, a bag of bananas and avocados, boxes of Special K and Cocoa Puffs and liquid plumber. I look away a moment too late. Our eyes meet the second my dad turns around and tells me to stop dragging my feet. And then he's looking at Pete too. My feet are suddenly stapled to the floor. Is that who I think it is, my dad whispers. I try to nod, but my neck is frozen. Pete grabs his bag and receipt and walks towards us. I'm betting you're Mr. Morris, my dad frowns and says, and you must be the drum teacher making money off my daughter. Pete's eyebrows curl, but he manages a smile. I think we need to clear the air. I should say so, my dad says. The three of us exit the store. Pete puts his grocery bags in his car before walking over to us. He looks surprisingly calm. My dad does not. The parking lot is early silent. I understand that Sam has gotten her, her, herself into a lot of trouble, Pete says. Yes, my dad says, for stealing and lying. I take these things very seriously. I couldn't agree more. I also agree with you for grounding her until further notice. My, do my dad laughs. But what? Pete stops and raises his eyebrows. I'm sorry. But what? There's always a but. So get, it, so get it out of the family so I can say no and be on my way. I have a family dinner to prepare, but I suppose you wouldn't understand that. Pete's face tightens, but he takes a breath and settles. It's just a suggestion, Ms. Mr. Morris. And I, mean, and I mean it with all due respect. Keep her punishments all the same, but allow Sam to continue with music. What does continue with music mean exactly? Let her perform in the recital this Saturday. If she does well, and I expect she will, a lot of doors will open for her. If that, en if that ends up being the case, I would ask you to allow her to continue private lessons. My dad scratches his chin. There's only one problem. Pete's eyebrows rise again, and that is, this whole thing, the lessons, the recital, whatever, it all started because Sam lied. I understand. My dad clears his throat. No, you obviously don't. Sam began lessons with you because she did things that were wrong. To continue lessons and recitals and whatever else you demand a week or month from now encourages, encourages her to lie in the future. I have no intention of teaching Sam bad habits. I fully support your parental decisions. I just want Sam to continue studying music. Why? to fill your wallet? 
I meet eyes with Pete, who now can't seem to hide his offense. My dad points at him and says, how much were you charging my daughter anyway? How much does fraud of a 12-year-old pay nowadays? How long have you known that my daughter was lying to us that the two of you could have meet without our permission? Peach jaw drops. Mr. Morris, please rest assured that I encouraged Sam to tell you about her, our lessons the moment I realized you and your wife were out of the loop. As for what I charge, the price can be adjusted to suit your family's budget. Well, now you know, and as far as you're concerned, you'll like things to continue just as they had before. I just don't want her to give up music. Pete reaches with his hands like he's holding an invisible object out to my dad. With all due respect, you've never heard her play. She's extremely dedicated. It's astounding what she was able to learn on her own. And with my help, she's grasping the material I throw at her better than some of my high school students. Think of what she'll be capable of when she's approaching college. My dad shakes his head. Let's say you're right, and my daughter is some kind of drum prodigy. How does that help us? You'll still find some way to charge outrageous prices. We'll still pay through the roof, all while my daughter learns that lying and stealing are okay. If you really want something, you can't have. There are ways around the money, Pete says. It might not cost you anything in the end. There are high schoolers, high schools that give out full scholarships to kids who aren't anywhere near as good as Sam will be by her freshman year if she keeps this up. Oh, that sounds great, my dad says. So she gets to spend high school goofing off with burnouts. Also, she can graduate with skills that are worth zero in the modern world. Great idea, Mr. Educator. Pete's face tightens with rage. This is the Pete I know, the one that sits across from me and tells me to stop whining and play another five-stroke wall. You think all musicians are burnouts who can't make a living. I'm one of those burnouts, and I'm doing just fine. Pete, don't. I hear myself whisper. I want to stop him, push him into his car, or put a muzzle in his mouth to keep him and my father from killing each other. But there's no stopping him. I can see it in his face. He's set to explode. I'm happy, Pete shouts, happier than anyone in your house. What are you contributing to the modern world? Mr. Morris, a miserable kid who will never live up to her parents' wishes? How dare you do this to Sam? How dare you hold her back? I put my head in my hands. I'm sure this is not how Pete wanted their conversation to go, but I'm not sure what else he expected. I once wondered what would happen if Pete and my dad ever met. Now I don't have to imagine it. Pete's face returns to its normal color. Get in the car, Sam, my dad says. He glares at Pete. Don't ever talk to my daughter again. I get into the passenger seat and stare at the floor mat as I hear Pete's footsteps echoing in the parking lot as he heads back to his car. The driver's side doors open, and my father gets in and starts the ignition. We drive home in silence. My mom is back when we return from the store. She knows something is wrong when she sees we don't have, to, we don't have groceries. What happened? Didn't you go to the store? Ask your daughter, my dad says. Mom looks at me, so I exhale and say, we ran into Pete. Is he your drum teacher, my mom asks. Not anymore. I shrug and look at the floor. He said I was pretty good, more than good, actually. I learned quicker than some of his high school students. My mom almost replies, but closes her mouth and looks away instead. I run upstairs to my room before my eyes burst with tears. Brian is sitting on my bed when I enter, staring at my empty desk. He stands up when he notices me and asks, are you okay? I plop down on my bed. We ran into my drum teacher at the store. Did he talk to dad? Is dad going to let you go to the recital? I shake my head as I curl my arms above my pillow and around my head. Brian must get the point because he leaves right away, looking almost as bummed as I feel when the doctor closes behind me, when the, do when the door closes behind me. I must have fallen asleep because I wake up with the start to the sound of raised voices downstairs. It's my mom and dad fighting over something. I can't hear clearly enough to know what. It goes on for almost an hour before I hear my dad storm outside and drive away. He doesn't come back for almost two hours. I hear him entering the house quietly like he's tiptoeing. He goes into the living room and rustles around for about 15 minutes, followed by a dead silence. He must have fallen asleep on the couch. My mom enters my room shortly afterward. I pretend to be asleep. My eyes are shut again, but I can both hear and feel her presence walking up to the side of my bed, kneeling down. 
an arm wraps around me and gives me a light hug that lasts longer than my, any hug I've ever gotten. Then my mom whispers, I'm sorry, Sam. I feel her embrace as I remember the sound of her voice fighting with my dad and know her wedding ring is not the only thing she has lost. I want to say something back, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be asleep. Will I get in trouble for replying, or will I get in trouble for not replying? I don't have time to find out. My mom stands back and walks out of my room. She closes the door quietly, leaving me alone in the darkness to wonder what I was supposed to do. It takes even longer than normal for the drums in my head to quiet down and allow me to fall asleep.